Allegiant Air specializes in connecting smaller communities to popular vacation destinations, often providing inclusive packages at affordable prices. Today, we're back on board North America's 14th largest airline, taking a quick flight from Peoria, Illinois to Nashville, Tennessee. This trip had an unexpected hiccup, but thankfully I had planned ahead and was able to work around it. So with that said, let's head to Peoria and get this journey started. It's a cloudy summer evening at Illinois' fourth busiest airport. Despite Allegiant advising passengers to arrive two hours before boarding, that's honestly way too much time at smaller airports like this, especially if you check in online. I arrived two hours before departure time, which was more than early enough, but that extra time would actually end up being pretty helpful later on. I was through TSA PreCheck in quite literally one minute and was soon airside in Peoria's modern and clean terminal. Today, our flight to Nashville is the last departure of the day, so the only people here are those on board this flight. With lots of spare time, I walked over to the rather new terminal expansion because for some reason I prefer it a lot more than the main terminal itself. The expansion houses gates 12 and 14, and despite not being used at all these days, it remains open for anyone wanting to wait here for their flight. Now, Allegiant being a budget airline restricts what you can bring on board for free. Carry-ons and check bags must be paid for, so if you are planning to bring those, pay for them while booking your flight because they are cheapest at that point. Otherwise, each passenger is entitled to one free personal item that must match these dimensions. Now, my backpack here has passed as a personal item on both Spirit and Frontier, which have the exact same dimensions as Allegiant. But as you can see here, my backpack looks a bit too big, and so you can really see one thing about Allegiant that makes them a bit more sneaky. If you've flown Spirit or Frontier, you know that their bag sizers have physical slots that you can put your bag in. These make it a bit easier to get away with your bag being an inch or two over the limit. But as you can see here, Allegiant's bag sizer is just a board, so if your bag is even an inch over the limit, you're going to get caught. So, not wanting to risk paying extra, let's see what I did next. Alright everybody, as you can see I'm back at my car, outside the terminal, had to leave the secure area because, as you just saw, Allegiant's bag sizer is not the same, well I knew that, but Allegiant's bag sizer is not like a physical slot where you can put your bag in like spirit or frontier have um it's like just a, a a board that you have to measure your bag against my backpack was a little bit over so i'm not gonna take any chances i don't want to pay 60 70 whatever dollars at the gate so i ran back to my car um i knew this i had a feeling this was going to happen because i knew about the the bag sizer uh thing that allegiant has so i had this my drawstring bag as a backup and thankfully it came in handy um, so I transferred everything into this bag, and it is currently 8.40. Uh, boarding starts allegedly at 9.07. The plane hasn't landed yet. Um, there's no way they're going to board at 9.07, but a um, bunch of people are still arriving, so hopefully uh, the checkpoint doesn't close. I don't think it'll close until like 9.15 or 9.20. So frantically ran back. It took me a minute to get through security the first time, so hopefully it takes just as long this time. Um, but thankfully I had this uh, on hand, otherwise I would have probably been $60, $70 poor if they made me um, sizes at the gate. So I didn't want to take that chance. Transferred everything. This bag is going to be heavy. It's going to be tough to carry around this next 20, out, 20 or so hour trip. But um, we here and let's get back through security and uh, let's do this. At this point, the airport had gotten a little busier with more people showing up for the Nashville flight. As such, pre-check took a little longer at three minutes. <laughs> oh no. Once I was back airside, I was able to see American Eagle's Ember 175 arriving from Dallas, one of four aircraft that spend the night in Peoria. With my drawstring bag in hand, I made sure it fit the requirements, and as expected, it was good to go. So let's quickly talk about this route. Allegiant began Peoria to Nashville service surprisingly back in June 2020 during the height of the pandemic. 
The route operates seasonally and has consistently performed very well, as aside from Nashville being popular for leisure travel, it's a popular business destination from Peoria as well. If you've seen my previous Allegiant video from when I flew their Peoria to Denver service, you might recall that at the moment the Nashville and Denver flights are served by the same aircraft. As such, the plane first flies from Nashville to Peoria, then flies to Denver and back, before finally flying from Peoria back to Nashville. Allegiant begins boarding 45 minutes before departure time, which is interesting given American Airlines now boards their mainline flights 35 minutes beforehand. Our flight was scheduled for boarding at 9.07, which is pretty ambitious considering the inbound flight from Denver lands at 9.02. Needless to say, we didn't start boarding at 9.07 given that the inbound flight was still deplaning, but then again, that doesn't really matter since Allegiant is a low-cost airline, and these airlines are absolute masters at quick turnarounds, as you'll see shortly. Allegiant is Peoria's largest airline, controlling over 50% of the market share. It's great to see that both the Denver and Nashville flights are doing very well, as demonstrated by how busy the gate area was. Boarding started 10 minutes late, and I was boarding in Zone 3. I still don't know how they determine zones because even though I didn't pay for bags, I did reserve my seat in advance, but then again I was seated towards the back. Allegiance A320 has 186 seats in an all-economy layout. Pretty standard for budget airlines as Frontier and EasyJet have the same configurations on most of their A320s as well. I'm seated in 27A, which I reserved online for $14. I've covered these seats many times before on both Frontier and Spirit. They're okay comfort-wise, but bare bones overall with a tiny table and netted seat pocket. The legroom is tight, but considering it's a short flight and the fact that I had a small bag in front, I found it pretty bearable. Above the seat are the usual passenger service units, including personal air vents. Overall, the cabin was clean, but I, I don't know what this was on the sidewall. It looked like someone had sneezed on it and this was never cleaned, but I tried not to pay much attention to it. Fasten seatbelt signs, smoking, vaping, and the use of automatic products are favorite at all times. Federal regulation requires passengers to reserve these signs and comply with crew member instructions. It is a federal offense to take disable or destroy my laboratory.
the in-flight service consisted of the usual buy on board drinks and snacks, and that was about it for the short time we were in the air. There's no Wi-Fi or in-seat power, so plan accordingly for longer flights, as the only main form of entertainment available is the in-flight magazine, which is pretty impressive that Allegiant even has one as a budget airline. I can't think of any other low-cost airlines that have an in-flight magazine. My favorite part of the magazine, though, would have to be the route map. Like I've mentioned before, Allegiant is actually an entire travel company, so they specialize in selling inclusive vacation packages, and that's made easier by the fact that they connect smaller communities across America to vacation hotspots. Because the flight was so short and a bit turbulent, I can't remember if the seatbelt sign was ever turned off. I think we only cruised at 31,000 feet for like 10 minutes before it was time for descent. I never realized just how short this flight really was, but I was overall excited to be flying into Nashville for the first time, that too on this rather interesting flight. Our approach brought us in from the northwest before turning base and coming in for landing on runway 20 left. My base fare for this one-way flight was $50, but adding on $14 for seat selection brought the total to $64. Not bad at all, I mean Allegiant is a solid airline providing good value for both solo travelers and families alike. The crew on tonight's flight were great and very helpful, and the early timeliness was pretty impressive also. I overheard some passengers on this flight saying things like, see you on the flight back, which really highlights how Allegiant specializes in these vacation packages because when it comes to serving smaller cities, Allegiant doesn't serve them every day. As part of the whole vacation aspect, they only serve these cities a couple times a week to ensure that you get a few days vacationing wherever you are before flying back. I was pretty impressed by how modern and spacious Nashville's new satellite concourse was. Even despite it being late at night with only one delayed flight departing, there was still one convenience store that remained open. Now I had always been under the impression that there was like an underground walkway or something connecting the satellite concourse to the main terminal, but a few days earlier I found out that there's actually a shuttle service that frequently runs between the two, which from what I've seen is pretty unique for an airport in the US. If I'm not wrong, the shuttles, they seem to run 24-7 and the ride takes around 3 minutes, giving you a free ramp tour along the way. The shuttle drops you off in the sea concourse and there are plenty of signs that direct you to the exits. But I won't be leaving the airport tonight as I've got a few hours to spend here before catching a 5am American Airlines flight to Charlotte that you'll see in a video very soon. Thanks a lot for joining me tonight and I hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time, take care and see y'all again very soon.